Hi, I'm T.H. Culhane, and I'm the co-founder of Solar Cities, a non-governmental organization. I like to think of biogas systems as the guts of a sustainable development program where you can plug in your solar and your geothermal, but at the core of it is this central technology that never gives up. The microbes in it have been around for three and a half billion years, and they'll be here long after we're gone. People who would intuitively understand that the waste from our kitchens and bathrooms can complete the growth cycle and become soil and food and fuel once again, and would realize that all we are really building is a stomach with a mouth and a throat, an anus and a ureter. So we like to use the I love you sign from sign language and say that this is the tank and then this is the input pipe, the I for input in sign language. The L uh, uh, is the, um, the liquid fertilizer that comes out on the other side and then the gas pipe comes out here. And so just with three pipes and a tank, you have a biodigester. Starts with your food waste, and your, as I mentioned, and your toilet waste and your garden waste, it goes in, it comes out as perfectly balanced nutrition for regrowing your plants, and you get gas, which can be used for electricity generation, cooking, refrigeration, light. Biodigester is the gut. It's the solar plexus. It's where solar energy from the form of food and, and radiant love and joy all comes together right here in this plexus. And that form of solar energy is what we are considering today. It doesn't need uh, photovoltaic collectors made from exotic materials, nor does it need float glass or any kind of industrial age material to make. It helps if you have it, but you don't have to have it. It is, in my mind, the gut of the entire permaculture revolution. And what we're going to show today is that Tamara has become a leader now featuring five different types of gut. And that may help to inspire the idea that there can be hundreds of different types of gut. standing on the fire-breathing dragon. This is a Chinese dome, fixed dome reactor. What it is, I mean, like all biodigesters, all it is is a tank of water. And it looks a lot like a septic system. In fact, all septic systems are biodigesters. They're just not designed to capture the gas. And that dome is where the gas is collecting and its pressure is pushing down on the water, which I guess is rising here. So you do have this seesawing where the natural pressure of the gas pushes the water up and then the water pushes the gas out when you open that valve. So you're actually standing on the stomach. That's the real stomach. This is the yeah. entrance chamber and water displacement area. And that's very important because if you don't have water displacement, it's very hard to get the gas to get out and get to your stove or to your generator. This here is the, is the mouth of the sacred cow, if you like, or the dragon. It just has a tube and a slope which is now vegetated, which is cool. And it's wide enough that you could dump manure in or you could dump uh, food waste that hadn't been finely ground. System. These are wonderful bathrooms. So I guess the plan is these will automatically flush into that. You'll never have to carry a bucket to here. In this case, these are two different animals, two different systems. This is kitchen system. Kitchen system is two inch pipes and they're really cheap and easy to get going through two-inch uniseals. At solarcities.eu, you can find video tutorials with animations that show how to take one of these international bulk containers and in just an hour or two, turn it into a very reliable family-scale biodigester that can take a bucket of food waste every day, which is what a family of four people generally produces, and turn it into roughly two hours of cooking gas every day for the rest of your life. Get yourself an old IBC tank, an international bulk container. You can find these used IBCs, these pallet-based 1,000 liter plastic shipping containers, literally all over the world. Take a three inch hole saw and drill three holes in the top of the tank as shown. Next, get yourself three two inch uniseals, grease them up with plumber's silicon, and pop them into the holes. Next, cut three pieces of 2-inch or 50-millimeter sewer pipe to a length of 1.5 meters. Designate one of the pipes as the feeding pipe, and firmly push the pipe through the uniseal, twisting as you go, until it reaches the bottom of the tank and stops. 
Designate the second of your three pipes as the gas outlet pipe. Then push the gas outlet pipe into the tank through the uniseal. Designate the third of your two inch pipes, the slurry or effluent pipe, where the rich organic liquid fertilizer or compost tea will exit. Bioactive solids are being digested at the bottom of the tank, mostly carbs and protein, while lipids, oils, and fats will rise and be digested at the top of the tank. And we don't want to remove feedstock that is still energy rich. Since our digesters are a kind of plug flow digester design, the food we push in one side of the tank is slowly shoved to the other side of the tank when new material is added. But the fertilizer we force out with each feeding has had the best opportunity to get digested. And because we draw it from the middle of the far end of the tank, it comes out as a liquid that is nitrogen and nutrient rich, but doesn't clog pipes. The sludge can stay in for years and years and only rarely needs to be pumped out to make a solid compost. With these three pipes in place, you're basically done with the digester. The rest is plumbing. Unlike most compost piles, there is no food waste that you can't put in. Fruit and vegetable rinds, cooked food, meat and grease, you name it. You just have to grind or mash it up and mix with water. Dirty or soapy water is fine so that it will fit down the pipe without clogging. This is, this is if you have a food grinder, this size type piping is fantastic. If you don't, and the next size class is using a three inch, I'm sorry, four inch pipe going in and a three inch pipe coming out. Four inch pipe is just big enough that you could throw a tangerine or an apple in. Uh, you're not going to get gas quickly from those. They may sit there for months and months and months. The Holda is an RT India floating drum digester. The stomach of the digester, and she has another tank that is slightly smaller as the gas holder, which they work very effectively, particularly because when you're in the kitchen, you can look out and know exactly how much gas time you have left. So in this baby, with the size, Every, every 20 uh, centimeters, which is about this, I think, if my hand measurement is right, every 20 centimeters is about a half an hour of cooking. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's almost 250 kilos up here. And she's able to lift it up every day. It's substantial pressure, which then enables us to cook at the stove with a decent flame height over there. And this is the Dominic Wanjahia solution when you don't have a stove. He's so concerned, as he should be and everybody should be, with the charcoal trade and firewood that's being used in Africa with the deforestation. He notices that one deterrent from biogas is the cost of the stove and the fact that you need two stoves, one to cook on biogas and one to cook on charcoal and wood. So he took this thing called a Jiko, which is a traditional uh, charcoal stove in, in, in Kenya, and he said, why don't we just get a coffee can, fill it with stones as a flame spreader, that's all it's in here, put the cap on and punch some holes here and drop it right inside the Jiko and then you cook on biogas until you're out of biogas and then you take this out and you can put firewood in if you need to. And that's been so popular and successful and all it takes is a pipe that goes in and that's it. And here uh, the other African solution is carrying bags of gas to your neighbor as Mafu just did, walking up with a back pass. That's two hours of cooking gas right there that he just carried up the hill, and it's lightweight. Ladies and gentlemen, probably the least expensive, most effective, and easily transportable biogas system in the world, invented by Dominic Wanjahia Kahumbu from Flexi Biogas. As its name implies, it is flexible. It can do splits and handstands. This is a biodigester made of a plastic bag. It has just a slit on the bottom where they took a knife and they went one, two, and then they spread it and then took PVC pipe and closed it in. So it saves on manufacturing costs tremendously. The other thing is, so you don't need a wall, you don't need to spend time digging, and it's ziplocked. Very clever invention by Dominic. It's ziplocked with polypropylene pipe. Water settles and water is going to spread out. So rather than containing the sausage, he says, let it flatten. And when the gas is produced, as it's beginning to be there, it will create a tension as the water tries to go here and here, pulling the top of that thing down. Absolutely brilliant, because it makes enough pressure to cook without any pumps until it's really, really low.
This is the piece that is going to be the traveling circus of biogas throughout the Echo Village network here and in the U.S. and hopefully many other countries. But her big difference is con uh, concrete forms that are relatively easy to assemble and because they're small pieces can be loaded onto a pickup truck and taken from village to village. And so uh, it's just a tank and there's the that ILY thing there. There's the feeding tube right there and then the food waste goes down inside and it gets digested and then it comes out on the other side as a liquid fertilizer and then there's a gas holder here that is anchored in that red cup anchored in and is buried underwater and as the gas fills the cup then it pushes the water out and over that cup creating a pressure that then can be used to push the gas out of the gas holder and to a electric generation engine or to a kitchen or to a gas lamp or a gas refrigerator uh, wherever you want to use the gas. So this is the scale model and this is the real McCoy. These are the Solar City's Pusheen mold variants uh, set up here at Tamara as part of our workshop and if you want to be part of the Solar City circus and have these molds come to your town so that you can create a functional living biodigester for your food waste and any other organic waste you may have, then see us at solarcities.eu and community.solarcities.eu, as well as joining us on our Facebook group, our open source Facebook group, Solar Cities Biogas Innoventors and Practitioners. And we hope you will be an innoventor and practitioner and join us. Please do try this at home. Egypt. And this is our biodigester, otherwise known as our sacred cow. Imagine that this is the cow's mouth, this is the cow's throat, and this is the cow's stomach. When you feed the cow, it's going to pass gas. That's right. And that gas is going to be under pressure. Making biogas is a gas, gas, gas. It's the same gas as the gas we pass. Making biogas is a gas, gas, gas. It's the same gas as the gas we passed. And you see trash piled in the middle of a third world country street. And you hear the food for fuel debate and wonder how we eat. Would we really save much energy if we all gave up heat? Do we really need those nukes? Or is that just the drum they beat? Must be some other way. Is there another way? You bet your ass. And it's a gas. And it's a blast. It's biogas. Yeah, biogas. We lived through the age of stupid. The US was king of fools. Spreading blatant propaganda that we needed fossil fuels. But we've always had bacteria and other microbes too. Making methane gas and alcohol and other biofuels since Henry Ford. And way before. There's been no need to go to war. There is an answer to please Al Gore. We can't afford to just ignore the simple fact of biogas. Methane from microbes and garbage recycled by thermophils, mesophils, hydrophils too. This is the only true natural gas. The other is still fossil fuel. Fossil fuel.